So if we look at how H5 Matter Analytics works um, with the identification of Priv and the identification of those features that we provide to be an input to the Priv log itself, uh, it really starts with helping folks categorize who's who and doing so in a way that's simple, easy, um, and really uh, lets the system do the bulk of the work. And we'll show you some of the tools in the application, um, the ways that we can extract people and organizations and use domains uh, to, to pre-categorize folks or email addresses. Um, but this is really an important foundation to a lot of what the, the Priv log is able to do in providing a lot more visibility and making everybody's life a little easier. Um, the second piece here <clears throat> is a big one as well, which is how do I disentangle the message bodies from the headers? And I don't just mean sort of the top header and the, the, the rest of the email, but really each header within an email message. <clears throat> Emails are, are naturally aggregators. They aggregate a lot of messages. And so being able to understand where each of those headers starts and stops, uh, where the message bodies start and stop, and being able to understand the direction of communication in each of those headers is really important especially when it comes to proof reasons and things of that nature. Uh, and then three, uh, being able to pre-train the system on how to identify what you're looking for while also avoiding some things that you don't want to look at. <clears throat> so we've actually pre-trained the system uh, using a linguistic modeling approach, which is a little bit different than a machine learning approach. Um, some benefits that we have is that uh, we can identify content, work well in, in different uh, file types, would be Excel, et cetera, be able to highlight the excerpts that triggered our priv assessment, because we're actually going through and using a lot of the knowledge that we've developed over the past two decades on what are the different ways that people really express legal concepts, um, what, do you, uh, what types of documents are going to be uh, considered subject to, to privileged claims, and be able to identify that, <clears throat> while also training the system on how to identify disclaimers and boilerplate language and be able to avoid those things that um, can, can create a lot of false positives. And so we'll show you a little bit about how this works in the application. And then fourth, which is very pertinent to today's discussion, uh, generating privilege log inputs that are reliable, that are um, useful and can be uh, a part of the recipe that you generate with our new privilege log um, design studio module uh, to be able to put it all together. And so um, we start with very strong name normalization. That's a, a key strength of the application, something that we've uh, spent a lot of time developing, refining. Um, and so our, our name normalization and our threading, which work hand in hand, are all our algorithms. So uh, it's, it's our um, experience with these algorithms in the wild that has really refined them to the level that they are and, and can allow you to use them um, with very little cleanup. The privileged reasons <clears throat> are pretty sophisticated. It allows us to take criteria into consideration, such as did we find mention of an attorney in an in a author field or in a, the first 100 uh, words of a, of a document, or did we find um, a client messaging their attorney? So direction of communication, where we're finding the attorneys, all that plays a big role into the privileged reasons, and that gives the second pass review and the priv log a really big jump start um, to get to those details. <clears throat> 